Uh, so we are now in section B. Uh, the first question about the venial calipers. They want to know the reading of the venial calipers. Uh, first of all, when dealing with the question of the venial caliper, you have to see from this number, the first number you are seeing, and the following number which you are seeing. You have to see the, you, you have to know the divisions. These are in centimeters, meaning if these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so they are ten, meaning these are millimeters. So this is 0 0.1 centimeters, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, which is 8.1 and 8.2. So meaning, if the object is ending here, then this is this should be 7.9, 7.9. Then the main scale is 7.9 centimeters. So we should just write main scale. Main scale. Sorry. Sorry, main scale is equal to 7.9 centimeters. Yeah, so when we want to know about the venous scale, we have to come here and find the the line, the line that's cutting with the one in the main axis, which is joining the one in the main axis, in the main scale, sorry, in the main scale. So if we come here, this is the line that is cutting with the one in the main in the main scale, the, and this is one, two, three, four, which is five. Five times zero point zero one, that's zero point zero five. Yeah. So the zero point zero five will be added to the to the reading we found in the main scale. So, so the venous scale is equal to zero point zero five centimeters. So the the the, the reading sorry the reading will be equal to this plus this and this will be 7.95 centimeters so the next question is write in words the si units of the following physical quantities and state their symbols so for the vel for the velocity temperature and acceleration so what they want is the the name of the si unit in words and then even the symbol so for the velocity it's meters the second and in symbols, it's like M over S. The temperature is in kelvins. That's the SI unit. Just in case someone is thinking degrees Celsius, it's kelvins. And the symbol is K. Uh, for the acceleration, it's meters per second. Okay, should I say per square second? Because it's the, vel the the velocity over time per square second, and the symbol is meters per second square. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So we go to question two. What is the difference between density and relative density? Uh, the density, the definition of density. First of all, the density is the mass per unit volume, but the relative density is the ratio of the same density, which is the mass per unit volume, of the density of the substance. Yeah. It's the ratio of the density of the substance, which is the mass per unit volume, to the density of a standard. For example, we usually get the density of a standard we are talking about. It's for water, if we are dealing with a liquid or solid, and the, the density of air, if we are dealing with a gas. So the relative density is simply the, the ratio. Density of the substance, the density you find over a standard. If it's a solid or liquid, you use the density of water as a standard. And if it's for air, it's for any gas, you use the density of air as a standard. Uh, figure 2.1 shows a cuboid container that has 5 cm square base and contains water to a height of 6 cm. So this is 5 and this is 5. What is the volume of the water? So the volume... Uh -huh. So in order to find the volume, uh, this is the height. Oh, this is the height. And this is the length. This is the breadth. So the volume will be equal to L times B times H, which will be equal to 5 times 5 times 6. Sorry. So 25 times 6, that's um, 150 cubic centimeters. Uh, uh, a stone is immersed in, into the water, in the cuboid, causing the water to rise to a height of 8 centimeters. Determine the volume of the stone. 
Uh, so after after the stone was immersed in water, there was a change from this position in the of the water to this position, which is eight eight centimeters. So this is the new position of the water. This is the new water level. So the volume will now change. It will be volume is equal to L times B times H again, and it's five times five times eight, which will be equal to. Uh, it will be equal to two hundred cubic centimeters. So in order to for us to find the volume of the stone, we have to subtract the the initial volume, which is one fifty cubic centimeters, from the new volume, which is two hundred cubic centimeters. So volume of the stone. Will be equal to 200 cubic centimeters minus 150 cubic centimeters, which will be equal to 50 cubic centimeters. So, if the mass of the stone is 80 grams, calculate the density of the stone. So, we are since we already have the volume of the stone and the mass, we are now going to calculate the density. Yeah, so the density of the stone will be equal to mass over the volume the mass is 80 grams over the volume here which is 50 cubic centimeters we're just from solving it and it will be 80 divided by 50 that will be 1.6 grams per cubic centimeter and that's the final answer yeah so we go to question to question b3 uh figure 3.1 shows a ramp being used to lift a box weighing 480 newtons, which is the load, through a distance of 3 meters to a height of 1 meter by applying a force of 20, 200 newtons. Question 1. State the meaning of the term simple machines. Uh, the simplest way you can define a simple machine, uh, it can be any device uh, by means of which a force applied at one point can be used to overcome a force at a different point. Yeah, that's the simplest definition. Um, the next question says calculate the mechanical advantage of the ramp. The mechanical advantage is simply the load over the effort. Um, mechanical advantage MA is equal to the load over the effort. Which will be equal to the load which was given in the so the load which was given is 480 newtons and then the effort is 200 newtons. So the load which was given is 480 newtons over 200 newtons which is the effort and this will give us uh, 2.4 uh, the next question is asking us to find the efficiency of the ramp and in order to find the efficiency because the formula for the efficiency is like mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100 percent but in the diagram when you look at the diagram uh, here this is the distance the formula for velocity ratio is like velocity ratio is the distance traveled by the effort over distance traveled by the load. So the distance traveled by the load will be 1.0 meters. Meter. It's one meter. And then the distance that will be traveled by the effort, it will be three meters. So let's just solve it. So we've already solved for the mechanical advantage, which is 2.4. 2.4 and then we need the velocity ratio for us to find the efficiency and the velocity ratio will be vr is equal to the distance traveled by the effort and the distance traveled by the effort is this one the slope the distance of the slope which is three meter three meters over the distance traveled by the load which is one me one meter uh, vr will be equal to three so the efficiency will be equal to MA, which is the mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%, which is equal to 2.4 over 3 times 100%. Let me just compute that. Times 100. That's 80%. Uh, so we go to question 4. Sh figure 4.1 shows a glass syringe with a sealed tip containing a gas at an initial, an initial pressure of 360 pascals, placed in hot water. After a few minutes, the piston in the syringe moved up. 
Using the kinetic theory, explain why the piston in the syringe moved upwards when the syringe was placed in hot water. Uh, this occurs because um, when you increase the temperature, the, when the temperature was increased, the particles in this container were given kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the particles increased. They tend to collide more frequent when the temperature is high and the kinetic energy is high. So, and then when they collide, they exert a force on the walls of this container. And when, since the force is exerted on an area, the pressure increases too. So that's the answer. That's the explanation according to the kinetic theory. Uh, the piston was pushed downwards to 20 cubic centimeters while the temperature was kept constant. In terms of kin the kinetic theory, explain why the pressure of the gas in the syringe increases when the piston is pushed downwards. So when you push the piston downwards, you are reducing the volume. And when you reduce the volume, th th those gas particles which are scattered, you tend to bring them closer. And we are just from talking about the collisions. So if you bring the particles closer, then the, the collision the collisions in the in the container, the collisions between the particles will also tend to increase now. The kinetic energy will still increase again. See, hence, the pressure will also increase, just as in the first question we, which we were just from explaining. Uh, calculate the pressure of the gas. Uh, so, calculate the pressure of the gas in the syringe. Uh, in this case, we are going to use the Boyle's law. Yeah, the Boyle's law, uh, which states that for a fixed... Uh, for a fixed mass of air at a constant temperature, the product of the volume and pressure are constant. So, in this case, okay. so we get an equation, the pressure, the initial pressure times the initial volume should be equal to the final pressure times the final volume. And what is the initial pressure? The initial pressure was given to us as 360 pascals. So, 360 pascals times the volume, so the volume which was given was 60 cubic centimeters. Uh -huh. So we are going to put 60 cubic So we put 60 cubic centimeters, or should be equal to, the final pressure is what we are trying to find, and then the new volume is 20 cubic centimeters. So the final pressure will be equal to 360 times 60 over 20, which should be equal to, let me just compute the the final pressure and it will be 1080 pascals or you can write it as 1.08 kilopascals it's all the same